<laughs> Who's running camera tonight? The ghost. Oh, the ghost camera. Hey, Richard. Yeah, how you doing? Heard you're working on your layout. I can't wait to hear what yes, you have to I talk am. about tonight. This will be fun. Mikey? Yes. All right, we have show number 225. A lot of neat models on the table. Oh, yeah. All right, somebody give us a countdown and let's do this. Ready? I am. Three, two, one. <laughs> The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> and by GL Robotics. With over 61 colors of 3D printing filaments in stock, your gateway to new technology. Check out their website at glroboticsusa.com. Further support is provided by KR Models. We dare to build. Check out their website at krmodels.net. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. And by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. And by Roca Prototype Models, we make it real. Check out their website at www.rocamodels.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week show in model routing, show number 225 for February 18th, 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, and I gave the rough edit to Jeff Schultz so he can write the text, but that video should be uploaded on Sunday before this podcast actually comes out. The March video, as you will recall, is part two in the series we're doing on modeling a layout. It starts out as a shelf layout, a simple shelf layout, which a lot of people have got a great interest in, mm -hmm. but then it morphs into a full-size layout where the shelf portion can be interchanged with one or another, and there were two, so we could switch them out and make for interesting operation and change up the same layout. It's an interesting concept and it came out really well and it's running in four parts, January, February, March, and April 2023. So look forward to that. We've got some really good numbers on the show, the show that just came out uh, last month, which shows us building the diorama to shoot these beautiful Roca safe pack auto racks on is well past 22,000 views. The Leitner trestle video is past 63,000 views. So evidently, just like Joe said on last week's show, people want to see us build stuff. They don't want layout interviews as much. They don't want the NMRA and all the different other interviews that we do. They want to see on that show us getting our hands dirty and building model railroad scenes and layouts. I get it, and that's what we're going to do. Tonight I've got sitting with me on this side where Mike always sits, I've got Mike Buddy. Hey, Mike. Hi, everybody. It's good to have you tonight. Thank you. Also, I've got Richard sitting next to me here who has made some great progress on his layout space, which he wants to share with all of us tonight. And I love it when we have new material like that. Looking at show notes here, we've got a lot of beautiful models on the table. First, in the rear here, you can see the Safe Pack Auto Racks from Roka, R O K A models. And, um, Dr. Robert Steers wanted me to mention that all of these models that we shared on a previous show, all the different road names, and I'm probably showing them to you right now because there's a lot of beautiful models that they made, three different versions, 
three different types of eras as these cars changed over time based on the economics and what people were buying, whether it was minivans, full-size Fords, or just smaller vehicles, they completely changed these models to work with what the times were and what they had to haul. And that's why there's three different versions of these. Long story short, all of these versions are presently shipping right now. So everybody that placed their orders will be mm -hmm. receiving them. Um, I believe that Bob said he got all the models from China last week, and they're diligently working on getting those all shipped out. He also said he's going to be at the Rocky Mountain Train Show April 1st and 2nd, showing off these models and able to sell them out there in Denver, Colorado, and also at the Spring Creek show that they have, the biannual show, will be this year, July 8th and 9th, and Robert will be also at that show sharing these beautiful models with you. So rock and roll on that. I'm really happy that this is all working out and it is truly a beautiful model and that's why people want it. Mm -hmm. Mike, anything you want to say about that? Because I know you've got two of them yourself. Oh, no, I, it's, it's just another, uh, another niche in the auto rack. Uh, models finally filled in a, in a mass produced model, something you know that, that we was available in brass before. And uh, it looked good, but it re required painting, and it wasn't a very reliable runner. Uh, mine shorted out. You're talking about the heavy brass ones? Yes. Oh, my God, I worked with those a great deal. Right. Ed Dressel and I got big time into that. Was that in the 90s when those came out? Yeah. I think that was. And we all experienced how uh, hard it was to paint the, the white inside, you know, with and then paint the outside a different color without it bleeding through. So, uh, yeah. That is so true. But yeah, these are really, really nice models. I believe the way they overcame that was they actually pre-painted all the parts before the rack was mm. assembled in mm -hmm. China. So they actually thought that through. Yeah. I would love to meet the individuals that actually build these. Right. Because I have a great deal of respect and ten for their tenacity and mm -hmm. their ability to pull it off. Because obviously with the brass ones, we did it before yeah. and I had a few defective brass ones which I completely took apart and re-soldered together yeah. before I could even paint them. Well imagine how hard it was to uh, for the workers that uh, built those Overland models over there for for them to solder all those uprights and stuff you know for the auto racks in particular I mean that's that's a lot of work. I know, right? And uh, according to Robert, they actually watch our show over there in China. Oh, yeah? They knew who we hey. are. So hats off to you yeah. all. We have a great nice deal of respect you guys. for your talents right. and what it is you guys do. Right. Also on the table tonight, I've got the KR models. I've got the uh, torpedo wagons, which were designed to haul the hot iron products. Originally started out at 1900 degrees, and then they changed the uh, prototype so they could haul metal as hot as 3,000 degrees. These models are all completely operational in that the torpedo main part of the body spins. You, you push F1 or F2, 3, and 4, and they'll all cause the model to do a different type of movement, forwards, backwards, complete rotation. We experimented with that last week, as you guys saw on the show, and I probably just showed you a little bit of footage then, again, of it running. Plus, I've also got this Huntlet B.O.B.O. switcher with sound. I took it out and I shot it outdoors. We ran it inside on the layout. It's quite an amazing switch locomotive and would be great at home on almost any layout, but it's specific to the British steel industry. So hats off to you, Keith. You did a beautiful job. I will box these up and ship these back to you on Tuesday so that you can have them for your next trade show. Also on the table tonight, I've got some beautiful models from Intermountain. As you will recall last week, Intermountain Railway Company sent us these absolutely amazing looking Aeroflow 1 and 2 coal gondolas. And tonight, I've got five more to present, as we presented six last week. And I shot these outside today under cloudy skies. But hey, when you're rail fanning, you can't tell right. where, you know, you, you deal with the weather you get. And so based on the cloud shots, these models still look prototypically accurate, shot out in with the blue skies and in the outdoors. Starting out with the first one I've got is the HO Scare Airflow 2 coal gondola. This one's got data only. This has got yellow ends on it. And these cars I shot from each side because I noticed on last week's show, each side of the cars was a little bit different in the paint scheme. Mm. The second one is an Aeroflow 2. 
This is Midwest Generation Company, reporting mark CWEX, car number 9277. And this car's got red ends on it. All of these have got interior bracing on them. They also have KD couplers and metal wheel sets. The next one is an Aeroflow 2, Cole Gondola. Canadian Pacific, car number 963930. Now this has got double rotating end couplers on each okay, end. How interesting is that? that? Yeah. As you can see from the dot and the red ends on these cars, um, absolutely another beautiful car. Hmm. The next one is an Aeroflow. This is the Aeroflow 1, Cole Gondola. Procore, reporting mics, UNPX, car number 103124. This car's got yellow ends on it. And the last one in Asia scale tonight is the Aeroflow 2, Cole Gondola, Lust Car. Reporting marks L-U-S-X, car number 4742 with the blue, actually I would call them turquoise ends. Because I shot them under cloudy skies, I bumped up the colors just a little bit so that the cars would be accentuated in the photography and look absolutely dynamite. Now, do we know, is there some kind of code for the colors of those things for, for them to be using so many different colors? Is that for when they make up trains or... Well, I, I know with the Canadian Pacific, they use the colors of the railroad. Right. Uh, Procore Leasing Company, um, as I recall, the BNSFs and the BNs that we had last week had green ends on them and brown ends on them. Mm -hmm. So the colors, a lot of time, follow the prototype railroad itself. But so many of these cars are cars that are built through selling stock. Right on the stock yeah. market, yeah. through companies that are leasing the cars to the railroads, mm -hmm. whereas they're all just pick and choose what color you want, the executives of the company, whoever it is, the leasing companies. But the fact is that these cars aren't just owned by the railroad, they're owned by private industry parties right. that also are hauling commodities on the railroad. Mm. So it's very diversified. And Intermountain Railway Company did a really good job in capturing all of that. Also on the table tonight, our N-Scale guys are gonna love these. These are the Super Domes, otherwise known as full-length dome cars. Absolutely beautiful cars in N-Scale and they've got full interior lighting on them. I did not shoot them in the dark as I promised you that I would. I still may do that, and if that's the case, I'll show you that photograph right now. But the fact is, the first one I've got is the Milwaukee Road Dome, car number 58. An absolutely beautiful car and actually prototypically accurate as to the M Milwaukee Road. The next one is the Superdome, Holland America West Tours, car number 58. This one's called the McKinley Explorer, and it's got beautiful mountains and scenery painted onto the side of the car. So I, Im I imagine this works with a cruise ship company. I guess. For I tours. <clears throat> the last one is an Amtrak. As you can see in this photograph, this is definitely phase one Amtrak paint schemes, um, which in this case, I'm pretty much sure this would have been an ex-Milwaukee Road and or possibly an mm. ex-Santa Fe, but it doesn't have fluting on it. So I'm guessing it would be an ex-Milwaukee Road in Amtrak colors. Car number 9312. Good job, Intermountain Railway Company. Beautiful little models in N-Scale, and thank you very much for helping us promote the best hobby in the world. And that is all the N-Scale stuff I have on the list for tonight. Again, microengineering, we're talking with the folks to see if they can come out here in March and give us an update on what is happening with regards to their company and how well things are going. I, I swear by microengineering track, I've used it on all of my photo shoots because they make my photos look that much better. So thank you very much. We're gonna go into Denny Yelsma's segment in a few minutes, but I really wanna talk with you, Richard, because now you've been in this new home mm -hmm. for nine months to a year. A little over a year. A little over a year. And he's finally got his drywall going on and is building a layout room. Tell us about what you're, what you're doing. Well, I got all the drywall up, I got it painted, I got the trim up, I finally got the much to my wife's delight, uh, the downstairs bathroom working. So oh, all that's yeah. really left nice. is to hook up the receptacles, hook up the switches and lay the carpet, and then it's gonna go to town on making the layout. <clears throat> but the best thing is coming up in August, I'm gonna be going out to Colorado to that place I spoke of when I was on one of your first shows, Leadville, and I am just gonna shoot the ever-living daylights out of the place. I'm going to have so many <laughs> reference photos. Yeah. Because if you remember, I told you I want to build my layout as a 
vignettes mm -hmm. of places I love, places I've been. And uh, the more I'm thinking about this trip, you know, and I, I'm so excited about going, I think the more I think about it, the layout's probably going to be predominantly Leadville and Leadville Market. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's certainly interesting. But, uh, you know, the, the building of the layout room <clears throat> picked up steam in the last few months. You know, if I would have went gung-ho from the start, it probably would have been built by now when I probably would actually have been laying some track, but... But then you'd be in an unfinished business. I mean, basement. It, yeah. Right? Well, no, I said this, to, you know, when I bought the house and I told my wife when we look for a house, I don't care about the rest of the house. I want the, the basement. basement. Right. <laughs> and, um, yep. My philosophy was if I'm going to build my dream layout, which is something I've always wanted since I was like 11 years old and you mm -hmm. know, going through the pages of Model Railroad and yep. magazine, seeing these huge basement layouts. Yep. yep. But my philosophy was this is my going to be my dream space and my dream layout. I want to do it right right mm -hmm. from the beginning. I don't yeah. want to like start building my layout and going, oh, geez, I should have done this. Hold on, let, let me go over here and do <laughs> yeah. Which I'm sure we've all been there, but you know, I want to avoid that. So yeah, Ken, it's, it's come along. That's just laying Your enthusiasm. Yeah. I can feel it. Yeah. Is That's it awesome. uh, going to be set in like steam era or? No, it's, I'm not going to be, I'm going to model what I like. I mean, right. it could go from the steam era, but I can have a GP9 running through that scene or, yeah, you know, a okay. mod, you know, semi-modern scene, right. 40s, 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. 70s, even 80s and have, yeah. you know, a 280 running through that scene. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's going to be prototypical, but not prototypical. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a good way to do it because uh not that kind of scenery doesn't change as much as if you've got signs and cars and stuff in the background to, yeah. to set the era. You know those those rocks pretty much set, stay the same for oh, yeah. forever. Like I uh, was the first show I was on, I was you know like Jack's uh, Jack Burgess Yosemite Valley. I mean his layout is amazing. Mm -hmm. and he did everything prototypical. Everything. Yeah. Buildings, the way they looked, the way they laid, the, uh, the era. But I don't want to be locked into an era. Right. I understand. Yeah. So. Well, that's good. I like the ability to buy whatever I want. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's something where Mike and I both experience trying to keep up with the prototype, trying to keep up with the latest, greatest modern era. But you finally decided to scale back and stick yeah. into the late 70s, early 80s. Right. And yeah. I don't know where I'm at. Look at the shelves. It's I'm all over the yeah. place. I finally realized around 1990 that I, I just couldn't keep up because I had still had Penn Central stuff t that to me was, that was new, you know, when I was a kid and it still seemed new. But here, here it is, uh, 1990, it, it would be all beat to, you know, beat yeah, up absolutely. and everything. And so I decided on, you know, 1980 is my cutoff for sure. All right, one of my favorite parts of the show that we do once a month for Denny Yelsma is we go over his latest new logos, and I think you've got those in front of you there, yes. Mike. Let me see what we've got on there so we can put those on the screen for folks to see. And I get to share these with you as well, Richard. First one is that I've got on the list. There's well, actually, there's I think there's um, 10 tonight. This is a Missouri, Kansas, Texas, the Katy. Katie. Yeah. Right, with the logo. Mm -hmm. um, perfect MKT. again. MKT. MKT, perfect for a jacket. The one that Mike liked tonight was a Promontory Point, the Union Pacific, the Golden Spike Steam Locomotives on May 10th, 1869 in Promontory Park, Utah. What a beautiful logo. I love the deer on this. This would look fantastic on the back of a black jacket. Yeah. Another one he's got is this Railroad Museum of New England. This would be a perfect thing, which uh, illustrates what you all could do with regards to your clubs. Having the jackets, the caps, the shirts made up so that when you guys set up your layout at a show or you set up, you know, you're at a club event, you're wearing your club colors and Denny can fulfill these orders for you as well. Next one we've got is this beautiful Union Pacific Big Boy. This is straight on front shot of 4014. Um, it's very nice. The Wabash Railroad Historical Society this is another logo that he had made for them, which came out really nice. I'm not sure how to say this railroad. Nagua? Nagatuck. Nagatuck Railroad. It looks like the New Hampshire Railroad it, to me. New, New Haven, you mean. Right, New Haven. Yeah. Nagatuck yeah, Railroad. Yeah, it looks like the same logo almost. Very interesting. 
Uh, the next one I've got is this beautiful, and this one I called Denny on tonight to try to just make sure that this is for real. This is an absolutely beautiful photograph that will be stitched out on any type of clothing. But the fact is, this is like a mural. It's a beautiful photograph of F3 locomotives and the Santa Fe Super Chief in the background with patrons getting ready to walk up the steps and get on the train. If he can pull this one off, and I know he yeah. can, that's got to be around 400,000 wow. stitches to make this. Uh, Man. This would look great just framed. Never mind wearing a coat. I would frame this and put this one in the layout room. Mm -hmm. It's art. Uh, next one I've got is... Uh, Another big boy, number 4014. This is a side profile shot of the big boy locomotive with the Union Pacific Herald on it. I'm very impressed with that. I've got a main central E unit. Um, very nice. Uh, again, perfectly stitched logo for a jacket. And the very last one I've got, which correlates oh, great with the Rocky Mountain Trade Show and with what you like, is yep. the Rio Grande. Rio Grande. These are F7s, it would appear to me. A, B, and A and B unit. A and B. So that is really cool. The next thing I need to do, and I've already got it on our screen right now, Denny wanted us to go over the letters um, O and P. He's got one of the most advanced websites I've ever seen, and I know why, because he pays a great deal of money to have this website up and running to share all the products that he has for his company. Starting with the old Colony Railroad. There's not very many under the letter O. Um, I've got the Ont Ontario Northland Railroad, mm. New York, Ontario, and Western Railroad, and the Ohio Electric Railway Company logos. And that mm. is everything on his website under O. But guess what's coming up next is P, and I yeah. have a funny <laughs> feeling Pennsylvania is going to be in here somewhere. And Penn Central, I hope. I know, right? Starting out with the, uh, this is an additional logo they made, the Breast Cancer Pink Ribbon. Uh, There's yeah. been a lot of um, prototype railroad companies that, did freight cars and paint schemes yes. in pink for the prototype railroad uh, that helped with uh, awareness of breast cancer and funding. The next one is the Pan Am Railways. We're all familiar with that. Chris Powell and Mar Mar has brought those beautiful Atherin locomotives over here in the Pan Am paint scheme that uh, we shot Pan outside. Yeah. I know it's one of Mike's favorites, <laughs> for real. Mm -hmm. And we're getting down to the Pennsylvania Railroad. I know, right? Yes. Check it out. The electrics, so yeah. many different variations of electrics that they've had over the years. The streamlined locomotives, this is the one that Bachman had come out with. Beautiful model. Um, again, all of these are stitched. These are not printed, and Whoa. it's available on jackets, shirts. And when you look at his website, you'll see that um, Port Authority is the main uh, brand of clothing that he chooses to sell. Mm -hmm. But with regards to the jackets, there's windbreakers, there are medium weight jackets, and heavy weight jackets. So this winter, Holly's been wearing the What's Neat jackets up to the gas station, and she's getting all kinds of questions about, what is this? What is this What's Neat? Uh, and so she tells her patrons about the show, and sure enough, when I go up there, um, they're familiar with yeah. what we do. Cool. Here's another beautiful one that Denny's got, the Pennsylvania Railroad, complete with the T1 up front and center and all the other locomotives that I would pretty much call the heritage, the heritage of seven locomotives that made up that railroad. Absolutely beautiful. Pennsylvania Railroad is, you know, there's, there's no shortage of what you could create, mm -hmm. plus any model manufacturer that's ever created models for the Pennsylvania Railroad, those are the models that they always sell. This is why yep. Broadway Limited's built an entire business on just that railroad for so many years. But there's a lot of beautiful here, the Broadway Limited, so many different uh, paint schemes and different situations that you could have printed up and, uh, I mean, stitched onto your clothing. Where are we on this? Oh my God, here we're we still come. on Pennsylvania. I know, right? The Q, the Q2 steam locomotives. That was a locomotive that was a 4264 wow. locomotive. What an interesting wheel arrangement. They were made uh, in brass. I recall uh, having those running on the Midwest Valley Modelers layout. But there's so many variations of the Q2. It's really beautiful the way they, that he has done this. T1s are one of my favorite. Broadway Limited came out with that uh, model. I think um, Lionel also did it in O scale. Absolutely beautiful. And here comes all the heritage paint schemes, the Pierre Marquette. And now we're on to a different railroad here. P and L E. P and L E Railroad. It's it's just amazing how Denny's been able to create all these different logos and follow up with all the prototypes. If nothing else, 
and you just wanted to research the railroads, all the information's on Denny's website with regards to the logos and what you can do. But check it out at yelsma.com. Thank you very much, Denny, for helping us promote the best hobby in the world, and especially for all of the What's Neat hats that you've been providing uh, the patrons, again, yeah. at Springfield, Massachusetts. 3,500. Uh, also at the RPM meet here in St. Louis, the NMRA meet here in St. Louis. I think he spent no less than $3,000 for just yeah. those three shows, giving hats out to the wonderful folks out there that wanted them. So I'm going to stop screen capture right now. It looks like I do have a good file. Yes, I do, and I love how it, I love it when everything works, Mike. <laughs> so tonight we got some models, um, and these models are from... Bernard Helen at Mini Prince. Mini Prince. And this is his monthly subscription that he comes out with and does uh, every month. And I think he signed us up for it. And tonight, tell me what we've got. It looks like construction workers. Yeah, and people just doing different things. This guy's on his cell phone standing there, and then a person with a wheelbarrow, um, the, a woman doing something, then a couple people sitting you know leaning and then uh you know, there's this is a couple kissing and then there's a couple other people what? doing something yeah right there no kidding well they're they're like hugging so they're he scans these are perfect examples of how yeah. he scans real people like that, yeah doing things so i can get me and holly kissing yeah uh, it's not necessarily that, that's it right there i mean, it's, that's cute Where's the other one? Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> what, what's cool about these 3d printed is you can really tell the people's body styles and sizes, or how different the they details. are, and yeah, how detailed they are and everything. It, it's not like the, uh, you know, the run-of-the-mill figures, HO figures that you get that are all the same Plastic size, and uniform, yeah. you know, and these look mold hyper-realistic. I'll bet I that's mean, how Prazier's doing it these days over in Europe, uh, oh, they're I'm probably sure. scanning yeah, real they, people now. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they are. I mean, they got to keep up with this stuff, what's going on, you know. We'll shoot some still photos or B-rolls of these up close so people can see. One of the guys looks like he's running a video camera. Yeah. Well, Bernard said he's going to come down here in the spring, maybe, and uh, be on our show and scan us. So. Another guy's got a cell phone in his hand, so that's, I mean, wow. Right. And you could change that to anything, a clipboard or, you know, to, if you were building a scene and needed a person doing something like that, I mean... It'd be you could change it to a camera or whatever. So anyway. very cool. What kind of vehicles did you bring tonight, Mike? I'll shoot B-roll of these as you talk okay. about them. These are new offerings from Brakina again. Um, my friend Bob Johnson at uh, uh, Master Built Models. They make a lot of truck parts for HO truck cabs and stuff. But uh, he's a dealer in Brakina and PCX eighty seven. These new cars that are coming out and uh, these first two over here on the left are Cadillac Eldorados about a 75 or 76 model and they're incredibly detailed with the uh, screen printing screen printed trim and can I touch and, one of those because yeah. those look amazing they are I mean I this mean, is Burkina yes so this is out of the box I don't have to do right. anything I didn't to do it anything to it holy cow so uh, the interior Right. I even, mean, I'm looking forward to trying to detail even the sunshades. dash in one of those. Yeah. That's sunshades on there. Right. Sun visors. Sun visors. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're really, their quality has always been good in the European models, but they've really been uh, really bringing out some cool American models. I don't know how long ago, about 10 years ago, they first brought out the 1970 Camaro. And I and the, the uh, '68 or '70 Corvette, I was really excited about those cars, and uh, now they're 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 coming out with some more. I think a Ford station wagon, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to. So seeing this is those a Cadillac. Too. Yeah, Cadillac. It's El got Dorado. a etched etched metal metal Cadillac hood, hood ornament. ornaments on it. Right, it's, it's freaking cool. That I mean. It's one thing to have prototype railroad products that are yeah. so amazing, but the vehicles, they're Even really the, pushing uh, the envelope. The wheel covers are screen printed and, you know, black and then screen over printed with uh, silver trim and then the white wall tires are pad printed and... Uh, 
Let me shoot some still photos of those. I yeah. don't think video would do those justice. Yeah, these are uh, you leave those very with me, nice shoot models. Yeah, yeah I I'll can't. shoot those outside tomorrow so as that long as, the folks uh, can see what Landon they look like. doesn't get a hold of them. Oh, we love him. He's <laughs> awesome. All right, what else oh, no. you got tonight? Mustangs from the same people, Burkina, a 68 Mustang, which is, uh, Walters came out a long time ago with, uh, when they came out with their auto plant series that you did a bunch of photography for. I do remember that. Uh, so a 67 well. Mustang was one of the models they made, but it, it left a little bit to be desired on the front, especially. And, uh, Peter Rings cleaned that model up for uh, 87 RPM, and I, I made a few of those, but their Spokina model saves all the work for everybody and uh, really looks great. The same amount of detail as on the uh, Eldorados, but um, these two are just regular Mustangs. There's a, a silver hockey stripe on the side of that one, and, and these both have stock wheel covers. Then these next three have like American mags, it looks like. And there's a black one with a, a black GT with mags. And then this one, this lo uh, green one, is the Steve McQueen bullet car from wow. the movie Bullet, if you've ever seen that. And then this last one is, the white one is uh, an exclusive paint scheme from uh, modelcar.com uh, over in Europe somewhere. And, I got mine off eBay, but I really, I've always liked that uh, white and blue scheme, so Dude, I had yeah. to have it. And then uh, a tra train thing I've been working on too uh, for a long time uh, is this 50 foot PS1 boxcar with the, uh, the right way slogan, safer shipping, cushion under frame, all this writing on it from central of Georgia. And, uh, I saw, first saw this car in 1984. I was a pole climbing school with, with uh, Southwestern Bell, and when I got to the top of the pole, I could see over the fence, and there was this car sent at a warehouse. So every time I'd get up there, I'd think, man, I love that. Thing. So finally, after work one day, I went over and took some pictures. I've been all but wanted to build a model ever since then, but uh, I That's couldn't so find cool. the decals. Finally, Hubert Mask from Mask Island came out with the uh, decal set, so I really went to town on this. It's actually an Athern 60-foot uh, um, auto parts car that I cut down to 50-foot. I cut out the ends and replaced them with uh, resin cast ends that I made from the old Quality Craft 60-foot um, box car kit. It came with metal Pullman standard ends, so I made castings to those ends and fit them into this car to make it as accurate as I could. And then uh, Nick Molo from uh, <clears throat> uh, Moloco was kind enough to send me the right size doors and a package of door latches parts that I could make the right size latches and everything. So anyway, I'm finally, uh, finally coming along and getting this pretty well done. And I did make one mistake on it. I'll drag this out for another couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> when I was putting the decals on, I would I would do a little bit of it at a time when I just had time to work on it. So I, and I was always in a hurry. Well, one day after I'd put these words on, the next time I looked at it, I had put this word right. I'd put it over one panel too far, and I didn't think I'd be able to get the uh, same decals. So. I got some thin, some white decal paper, I cut it up into thin strips, and I handmade the letters in the right place and painted out the old slogan so that I could move that word over one. I was going to leave it that way, but it just bugged me, and I knew it would always bug me. So anyway, I did that. The so. pursuit of the perfect yeah. model. Because so. you climbed a pole and saw it one yeah. day at work. Right. The memories, the way you tie it all together, and just the fact that you put different ends on it, different doors on it, you are definitely scratch building to make this one right. Right. I hope to have, I've been working on this one for a long time, but it would always get put aside. And finally, when Nick Molo sent me the parts I needed for those doors, that was a, a big, big boost. So. We're lucky to rub elbows with you, Mike. You're quite a craftsman when it comes to this hobby. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So. so with that, guys, we're going to take the NCE power cab, 
the pro system here on the layout. In fact, I'm going to take the smaller NCE system and hook it up to the N-Scale layout so I can make these uh, N-Scale cars light up for the previous segment we just did. But tonight, we're going to take the NCE system and we're all three going to go run some trains. So that's it for this month. Uh, stay tuned for March. we got a lot of special guests and a lot of new exciting stuff coming up. Just to keep this going, the best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it sitting all around me, guys. So let's go run some trains. <laughs>